Welcome to another example of Fistful of Toes 3. This time we're comparing Hold Fire and Overwatch with either an M60A3 TTS or M1 Abrams Company versus a battalion of T64As. My name is Richard and this is Miniature Wargaming New Zealand. The M60s have the first move and they move 7, rating 7T. So the M60A3 TTS company move up onto the ridgeline to cover the valley to the side of the town. Just a note while I move them up, I make my ridgelines out of florist wire, painted the same base green as my hill sections, and tacked down with super glue at intervals. Now the M60s can't see anyone, so there's no firing. Since they're standard S stabilised, have moved full, and still could have fired but didn't, they can get a hold fire marker. I'm using these little green stars as hold fire markers. I got them from a craft store. They are originally for beading. Now the Soviets turn in their T64As and have a move of 9 with a rating of 9T. The lead half company moves wide of the town to make sure there's room for the others. Because the M60s only have hold fire markers, they can't interrupt the T64A's movement. I'm going to check line of sight now. The rules state you trace from any part of a stand to any part of another stand. But these are originally designed for vehicle models without bases. So I'm restricting this to be from the middle of the nearest base facing to the middle of the nearest base facing of the stand you're trying to spot. Checking this leftmost stand can't draw line of sight to any of the T64As, but none can spot it either. The other two M60A3 TTSs can draw line of sight to the right handmost three T64A stands, or half the battalion. The rest are masked by the town. This means three of the T64As can engage two of the M60A3s. So for this example, we'll assume the Soviets are the attackers and the US are the defenders. In the sequence, the attackers fire first, followed by any defending stands with hold fire markers, with the results of the fire being effective after all stands have fired. In this case, the lead to T64 stands are taking on the middle USM60 stand, as he's the closest, and then the third T64 is going to take on the right-hand US stand. He doesn't have to select the middle one, because that's already having someone fire at him. So resolving the fire, looking at this data chart that I've made up, the T64A has a range of 12, that's its effective range, rate of fire of 2, and the gun penetration of 14 slash 13 H. And the 14 is what we're looking at here, because that's the armor piercing value. So now that we've declared the fire and the targets, measuring the range, the first two against the middle M60. One's about nine and one's just over 10 centimeters away. So both within effective range of 12. So with a rate of fire of two and two of them firing, that's four. So that's four dice needing fours. But in this case, the T64s are fair quality which gives them a dice roll modifier of minus one, so that makes the effective roll needed a five to hit. And the first tank stand fails to hit, and the second one gets one hit, rolling a six minus one is a five, and that's enough to get a hit.
Just to make it easier, I'll use an orange marker to represent the hit. Now, the third T64 over the back, he's just within 12 centimeters range, so effective range, and he needs a five as well. Watch two dice for the rate of fire. He gets a single five, so scores a hit on the end M60A3 stand. So on a ridge line, that's a four plus to save, and that first tank fails to save. And the second tank, he succeeds in saving. So just to remove the little orange star to indicate that that hit was not successful. So penetration 14 at effective range, versus armor of nine means five dice, Rolling and getting sixes destroyed. Now I've added some cotton wool to represent the destroyed M60, but because it's got a hold fire marker, he's able to fire back. So he's going to fire at the lead T64A. Now the second M60, he's going to split his fire across two T64s with a rate of fire of three. Losing one for splitting your fire means one rate of fire against each of the other two that fired on them. So now we've picked out who's firing at who. The first one, the destroyed M60, firing all three rate of fire at that first T64. They've got a range of 20 and checking the range it comes out at 10 which means they're in short range now the m60s are good which gives them a plus one dice roll modifier and short range is threes so effectively they need twos to hit so rolling three dice getting three hits now i use a dice sometimes to denote hits so putting a three up against that target means he's got three hits. So firing the second M60, first against the back T64, and measuring the range, he's at effective range. So at effective range, that's four, but he's good, so plus one, so he needs a three. So rolling the dice, he got a four, which is one hit. Against the front tank, rolling a two. Plus one is three, which isn't enough at effective range, which needed a four. Now, because the T64s are in the open, there's no saving through. So all three hits are treated for penetration. So the M60 TTS has a penetration of 13, but at short range that adds two to 15. And the T64A has an armor of 10 A7, but here the A is not relevant. So that's 15 versus 10, total of five dice. So with the first set of five dice, five for each hit. And out of the five rolled, we got one six, which destroyed it on the first hit without having to roll for the other two. Again, adding some cotton wool on top of them to indicate destroyed. The single hit against the far tank, he's outside of short range, so effective range is 13, less than armor of 10 is 3 dice, and rolling those 3 dice, get a 5, causing a quality check. So marking them with a little red star to indicate a quality check in this case, and rolling for that quality check, Fear needs a 6 to pass, and he rolls a 6. Now, because the two M60s fight, they lose their hold fire markers. Now, the one M60 that didn't move and didn't fire is now going to go on overwatch. The other M60 that fired last turn 
is going to also fire again this turn. So he's not moving and firing one shot at each of the two T-64s. Now I missed off something. At the end of the Soviet turn, there were three T-64s that could have fired but didn't. So they each gain a hold fire marker. So the M60 firing, he's just outside of effective range as no one's moved. So that's needing a 4, but he's good. So that's a plus 1 dice roll modifier. So he needs 3s to hit. So firing once against each target, which is rate of fire of 3, less 1 for changing target. And he's good, so plus 1, and it's at effective range. So 4 with a plus 1. One gets a 3, and the other one gets a 4, so both hit. So there's no saves because they're in the open, so penetration of 13 at effective range versus armor of 10 means 3 dice. And the first tank rolls 3s and 2s, so no effect. And the second tank rolls a 4, which causes a quality check. Because the Soviet tanks fired last turn, they didn't get hold fire markers, so the quality check needs to be taken now. So resolving the quality check right now, he rolls a 5, and because he's fair, that fails the quality check, so he bugs out. So now it's the Soviet's turn. The hold fire markers on the... Soviets are removed now at the end of the US turn because they couldn't fire. Now the Soviet T-64As move a maximum of a 9. So moving the back one first, he's going to come up beside the town just short of the road. The M60A3 TTS on the hill on Overwatch can now see this first T64, but he won't fire yet. If he had chosen to fire, he'd bet a minus one for fire during movement, but he'll wait for all the movement to stop. Now their remaining T64s all move forward as far as they can, moving nine. Now, the M60A3 TTS on Overwatch, he now performs Overwatch during the Overwatch last phase, and he gauges two targets at a minus one rate of fire, the nearest two tanks due to priority rules. The M60 is 20 range, so 10 half range, needing threes with a plus one die roll modifier because they're good. And he rolls a 2 hitting the nearest one, and a 6 hitting the second target. So one hit against each at short range. He's 13 penetration, plus 2 for short range, versus 10 defense of the T-64, means 5 dice each. So he rolls the first one, a 5, best result, and against the second one, the results include a 6, so he's destroyed. With the fire combat over, the quality check needs to be taken against the first T-64. And he rolls a 3, so he bugs out because his fear needs a 6. And finally, the M60 loses its Overwatch marker. So now the US Overwatch is over, and it's the Soviet fire phase. The T-64s can now fire up onto the hill at the M60 A3 TTSs. The M60 nearest the peak of the hill was the first target, and the T64 stand nearest the town is going to fire at him as he's the closest tank to him. 
Now that the M60 near the top of the hill is engaged by somebody else, the second T64A can choose a different target, and he fires at the second M60 down the left of the US line. The first T64A range is just under 6, so short range because the effective is 12, so needing 3s with a minus 1 dice roll modifier as the fear, so needing 4s essentially. Rolling a 3 and a 6 gets one hit. The other T64 needs 4s at effective range. So with a minus 1 because he's fear, that means he effectively needs 5s. He rolls a 2 and a 1. So all those shots miss. So the first M60A3 TDS that was hit needs a 4 to save as he's on a ridge line and he rolls a 3, so he fails to save. So now since he failed, he's going to have to work out penetration. So 14 penetration plus 2 for short range is 16 against a defense of 9 for the M60 A3 TTS is 7 dice. However, rolling 7 dice, the best are 4s and 5s, so that causes a quality check the M60 needs to take. So taking the quality check after all fire, the M60 is good, needs a 4 plus to pass. And he rolls a 1 and fails his quality check, so he bugs out. Now, at the end of the turn, all combat units that have lost two-thirds of their original number of armed or total stands, whichever is lower, must take a quality check, or the remainder of the units must be removed. So the T64As, down from 6 to 2 stands, must roll a 6 to pass as they're fair. They roll a 2, and the remaining two half companies bug out. Now the last M60A3 TTS, down from 3 to 1 stand, must also roll for a unit loss. Being good, they need a 4 plus to pass, but only roll a 3, so that stand also bugs out. So with that, both units have been removed from the battle. Now that's the end of part 1 of the Hold Fire Overwatch example I was doing. Look out for part 2 coming soon. This video has been put together by me, Richard, at Minishell Wargaming New Zealand. Please note I'm a fan of Fistful of Toes and have no commercial connection to the rules. Here's some details about what you've been looking at. Please check out my other videos on A Fistful of Toes, Miniature Wargaming and Board Gaming. A Fistful of Toes 3 is a set of miniature wargame rules for modern mechanised warfare from 1915 to 2015. It's written by Ty Beard and Paul Minson. There's an official website and a Facebook group to vote. If you like the video, press the thumbs up, let me know what you think in the comments, feel free to hit subscribe, and if you press the bell, you'll get notified when I upload a new video.